Today we have five all new fall decor DIYs. Keep watching. I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own DIYs. The first project is a hanging tin floral. So I thrifted this little tin bit from Goodwill and I'm just going to take my newfound sanding block from Dollar Tree. I've, I've not seen these so they're not in my area anyway. Um, but this works really well, really, really well, and I'm not busting up my fingernails while I'm doing it. So I was unable to remove this label, and I didn't want to take the time to soak it off, um, you know, overnight. I needed to get this done. So I decided to sand it down, especially around the edges to make it nice and smooth. So now that everything feels like it's nice and flat, don't worry, we will be disguising this with paint. We're going to clean it off. I'm just using a baby wipe and then I'll dry it off. Then we're going to take it and spray paint it with two coats of that olive green. Now we're going to have a brown and a green here. I do change that green to a different shade. All right, so I'm going to take this bath sponge from Dollar Tree. Tear it up. Uh, you don't want any square edges, okay? No square edges. And I'm going to start dipping into that brown, this true brown and I'll start stippling this all over. And I'm just gonna turn that sponge to give it different, you know, I don't want there to be a discernible pattern. So I'm just gonna turn it in different directions, press down harder in some spaces and a little lighter in others. Idea is to make this look like it is aged and it's been sitting out somewhere in somebody's lovely little happy garden where of course there are sunflowers growing. And we are changing from summer to fall. Okay, so now we got it looking nice and rusty. We're going to add layers onto this. The spray paint had a satin finish and I really wanna cover up the shine. So we're gonna do that in a few steps. Take whatever green that you like. This looks like a nice green to me. It's got that warm coloring in it and it looks like moss. So I'm just gonna tap this all over and I'm using a smaller section of the sponge to do that. I didn't wash out the sponge because we're gonna be using the brown again as we layer on the texture from the paint. Now I'm just gonna dot this on. I'm gonna go around and make sure that all the little areas on the handle and in the corners side are covered. And we're gonna let that dry. Looks a little loud right now, but don't worry. We're gonna go back over it with a little more brown. Now there's barely any brown in here. I'm just getting small amounts of brown and I'm going to tap that over. And I'm looking for the places where I still have a little shine left and I'll just dot that around. You can use, if, if you're trying to get like a specific corner or around the edges, just take one finger and press that down and it will go a little bit darker into those areas. Be sure you get your handle too. They do have something on a smaller scale at Dollar Tree I saw recently. It is much smaller, but it is tin and it is thinner as well. But you get the idea and you could certainly use the same technique. I'm gonna use a little bit of cool temp hot glue and drop down some floral foam in the bottom to hold our floral arrangement together. Now this is gonna be a super easy floral arrangement with all of our greenery coming from Dollar Tree. So we've got some beautiful eucalyptus. We've got that little pick over there on the side that is just stunning. I cannot believe it came from Dollar Tree. And then we're also going to use some mums from Dollar Tree. Now, so these are, when you get them from Dollar Tree, they're usually all pushed together. Divide those up. Kind of pull the picks out a little bit and slide those pieces of leaves down your stem so that they look even. It's going to give you a, a more of a high-end look. We're just gonna put the whole entire pick in the back center. Very easy to do. Now these are the moms that have the little bit of like meshy or burlappy kind of, burlappy, yeah, kind of texture in them. And uh, so we're gonna add those in, the entire pick. And we're gonna do it mm, sort of off to the right a little bit, but don't be too obsessed with where you put it right now because things can be moved. They're on wires and you can bend them. Then I'm gonna grab another same one and I'm gonna press that down. I'm trying to make sure that the taller ones, cause there's usually one taller, you know, in the picks that you get from Dollar Tree. I'm trying to put, arrange those so that they are pushed toward the center so that the arrangement is higher in the center. So that's what you see me doing here. You see how that goes? It's kind of graduated from the back down to the front. 
I'm gonna grab this pick now and just pull it apart. You can see me down there in the right bottom corner. And then I'm gonna place it down, rather pushing the stem back into the gap between the two floral bundles. And then I'm going to move those around a bit, kind of thread my little flowers through there. and then decide if I need a little more fullness at this point. And you could leave it like this, but I think I want one more pick off to the right. So I'm going to bend and turn those a little flick on the bottom to make them kind of go outward instead of straight up. I'll take that third pick. So, so far we have one, two, three, four, five picks in here. And what a pretty arrangement that makes. Very simple, very wild, cottagey looking. So grab your ribbon. Here's my little cord of fall ribbon. Choose the one that you like and that coordinates with the colors you have. And this one, this one I believe I got at the thrift store. Look at this, y'all. Have y'all ever seen one of these? I know some of you have, because some of you sew. And this goes way back, I do believe. I love it though. It's better than a pin cushion. It's just wound up paper. I love it. So, I am going to make a little bow for this. I'm going to flip this over on itself. This is about six inches. So that's one, two, three times so far. And I want to leave a bit for a tail. So we're going to have five loops, three on one side and two on the other. And then I'm going to cut the remainder off to make uh, some little tails. Okay, this is wired ribbon, so it's going to fold and stay together nicely. I've just chosen a little thin gold ribbon here. Not even entirely sure where this came from. And then I'm going to fold it to make sure that my loops are the same, just giving me an idea of my placement. Then I will grab that center, flip it over, and then start bunching up the fabric from the bow. Get that ribbon in there and just pull it, make sure that I'm still in my center, and pull it tight in the middle. It's going to sort of pleat it in the middle, but don't be too concerned about that because you're not going to see the back of your bow, right? So a couple of knots is going to keep that locked in place. Then you can pull your little loops out. Obviously, if you use more than six inch uh, folds, then you're going to have a bigger bow. If you use less, you're going to have a smaller bow. Smaller bows are a little more difficult to handle if you have vision problems and if you have problems with your dexterity. So if your hands are weak or, you know, you have arthritis, it's a little more to worry with when you get down to smaller size bows with all the fluffing. Okay, so all the little tail pieces I'm going to cut in a dovetail and then the little extra pieces that are in the inside of the bow we're going to pull those out and we'll give those a little dovetail too because you can show those in your bow when you get it you know on your piece you can flip those around and you can have those showing too and it gives you a little more fullness and then it's not the same bow that everybody else has right we want something unique and something that brings us joy in our home all right so i'm going to use a pick this is like a I don't know, it's just a dowel. It's a, a thin dowel that I thrifted and I had a, a bunch of them all in a rubber band. And these work really well for putting things in florals. So I'm just gonna add some hot glue and then I'm gonna tie a very tight knot over the hot glue is really gonna lock that bow in place. You could always glue to the metal, but if you use hot glue on metal, it could pop off. And I'm just going to say that most people don't have E6000 sitting around or the time to wait for it to dry. So we're going to use hot glue for this and this method. Now, once that glue is dry, because we don't want to make a mess, we'll be using it in here. You're going to trim off as much as you need so that it will sit down in your little bucket. Obviously, if you use the Dollar Tree one, it's going to be a smaller bucket, so make your little stem a little bit shorter. And then flip those tails, all those little tail pieces out. And you can trim them down if you need to, and fluff out the pieces of your boat. This has five loops in it. I think the look of this is super cute. If you don't like the bow, you can certainly leave it out, but it gives it a little extra some, I don't know, like festivity, I think. It really says that you're welcoming fall from summer into fall. 
yeah, I think it turned out pretty good. What do you think? Think of all the options for colors that you can use in Dollar Tree. They really have got some beautiful florals. I just really hope that your stores have the florals that my stores have. But if not, substitute where you need to. Grab those scraps from last year. The next is going to be cream and sugar pots. Now, if you happen to have these sitting around the house when you were in your farmhouse days, you can use those now and flip them and use them for something else. So these were in the donation pile, but I decided to get these out because what do they look like to you? They look like pumpkins. Let's see what we can do with these. We're gonna try two different finishes on. Because they are shiny, we're going to be sealing those first with a matte sealer, and then we'll be putting our chalk paint on top of that. So I gave them one good coat, let them dry thoroughly, including the little lid. Then we're gonna use the pumpkin chalk paint. It is orange and it is matte. And I will start off with the lid just to show you how simple this process is. Y'all know how to paint. And we're gonna do this. When you are painting something that is circular, if you go from the inside outward in even strokes, it's gonna give you a better look. You don't want to see strokes going side to side and just willy-nilly all over the place. It's gonna leave gaps in your paint and your coverage and you don't want that. Go around the lip of that as well so that everything has some coverage. This little pot and the lid are gonna get two coats each as well as the creamer. All right, we're gonna grab that school glue because it is on sale right now, super cheap with school starting back soon. We're gonna get some cheap skin chalk paint, use whatever color that you like. I flipped that around so I wouldn't mistake my, my two different whites there. I'm going to add some school glue all over the top of this lid and we're gonna do some crackle paint. Now look at my little thrifted brush, just hair falling all out of it. It's time for new brushes, y'all. Any companies watching, I'd love to have some new brushes. All right. So, we're gonna go around and do the top and do the sides. We're not gonna give it a chance to dry. We're gonna dip into the other chalk paint and we're gonna put that all over here. You do not want to run that chalk paint back and forth. You wanna give it one swipe and only go and add a little bit of extra where you don't have paint. You don't want to have a mess on here. Okay, we're gonna leave it like that and we're gonna start adding heat. This is the second time I have had a heat tool to croak on me. So I am in the need for a new one. Does anybody have one they can recommend? This is um, Arteza and I've used them for years, but I'm looking for something a little more heavy duty. So anybody have any suggestions? I would really appreciate it if you could drop that in the comments. So I'm gonna continue to add heat here and it is going to begin to crackle. Look at that, I like it. The process of crackle painting is fun. To me, in my opinion, it is fun. I really, really enjoy it. I'm taking the hairs out of the thing. Look at that, isn't that terrible? But I'm gonna use it to death before I throw it away because that's how I am about stuff. It has really got to be on its last leg for me to trash it. Okay, maybe it needs a haircut. All right, so we're gonna go around all the nooks and crannies and all over that pumpkin with an even layer of the paint. The thicker the paint, the bigger the crackle. So I'm not having like huge amounts of big plaques of crackling paint. I just wanna make this nice and even. And this is going to be a very special little pot. It is really going to have some stuff going on. I'm gonna start off by just using my chippy brush and going into that paint and going over each of the little ribs in that pumpkin. Or each of the sections, I believe the ribs are the gaps in between, am I right? I had a lot of subscribers uh, tell me that they were ribs in a pumpkin, so thank you very much for that, because I could not find that word. Now on the bottom, I'm not as concerned, so I'm just gonna kind of stipple that paint on and go over the bottom as well. And then you see, I'm trying not to go back over any place I've already laid paint down, right? I'm gonna go, just gonna touch over the top. What you see me doing is just touching over the top. Then I will swipe some down each of those little depressed areas until 
and I'm working quickly, but this is in fast speed, uh, in case y'all were wondering. I'm working quickly because I want to get that heat on there to get that crackle started. Now I'm just going and, and touching it along. If you want to leave orange gaps, you can certainly do that. And in the process, we will have some orange showing through. And I am pleased with that. I'm totally fine with it. So this is the coverage we have. And I am going to start adding that heat and drying it. You can most definitely use a hair dryer here if that's what you would like to use. That works too. I'm going to keep on and make sure that you get all over it. You want to get all over the individual little pieces. You want to get all in the details of the beading on the top and bottom. Look at the crackle. This is so fun to me. And I have to say, I wasn't into crackle when it was popular back in the, what was it, the 80s? But it's really an enjoyable process and it gives you such a unique look. So for those of you who saw the sunflower tray and really loved it, you may enjoy these. But again, you know, make it your own, however you like it. So let's age this baby. We're going to take some of that antiquing wax and a little, I just have a little narrow foam brush here. Got my paper towel on the side. And down in the ribs where it goes down, I am going to take some of that and go right down in there. Now, I've never done this particular technique before, so... I'm not exactly sure how I feel about it until I get to the end. I was really thinking, oh, you've messed this one up. You're going to have to scrap this and start over. But I make it work. Nope, I don't give up. No piece left behind. So now I'm going to get that paper towel, and it is dry, and I'm just going to start going over those spaces. And I'm thinking, hmm, this is not spreading like I want it to. It is clinging to the chalk paint, and it is not spreading like I want it but I keep trying. We persevere. I'm going. So I'm going to grab that brush and it barely has anything left. I'm going to go over the lighter sections to try to get it kind of blended. Get the paper towel. Okay, now this is looking better. I'm liking this better. Yep, I like that better now. But let's grab a baby wipe or a little wet face wipe and then go over the entire thing any place that it's a little bit heavier kind of lightly go over that and it's going to let some of the orange from underneath show through as well but to me that just adds to the unique aged look of this and i'm happy with the finish oh yeah that is look at that y'all i like that and if you don't like it you don't have to tell me i figure if you don't comment on it you probably don't like it so you don't have to tell me <laughs> All right, so chippy brush into the brown. We're using a different technique on this one. She just has two layers of the paint on her. Then I'm gonna go in the cracks and I'm gonna go over all of the little beaded section. And inside the lip, I'm also gonna go all the way around the detail that is in that handle. Now, you might not have the exact same things that I have, but you can certainly find a jar at Dollar Tree, something that you can do this yourself. You know, some way that you can do this yourself. Go over that, I'm using that damp wipe, and I'm just gonna blend that out and all around the edges too. So there's a different technique if you don't like the chalk paint. Well, the uh, crackle paint, I mean. <laughs> Need some more coffee, ladies and gents. Okay, so once they are thoroughly dry, we're gonna go back in and make some little arrangements. So I've got some leftovers from last year, a little bit of leftover foam. I've got some leftover moss. We're going to put a little glue in the bottom, put the foam down, let it dry. Now on the top of this, I'm going to use tacky glue because I don't want to completely disintegrate my foam. So just adding that tacky glue and then we'll put that moss right down inside of that. You can use the brown moss too at Dollar Tree if you would like to do that. But I kind of want to give the feeling of summer into fall. So that's why I use the green. And you're not going to see that much of it anyway. So I'm going to cut these little picks down. I do think that these were from Walmart. If, I, if you watched last year, you probably remember that. So I think it was from some stuff that was donated to me, but they had a Walmart uh, label on them. And they were already cut down. I'm going to add some picks here and there. I've got my pumpkin in place. 
so it's nested in there. You can press the leaf to the back so you can see the lip if you really want it to look like the little creamer pitcher. I just feel like that pumpkin is too big, even though I love the shape. So I'm gonna replace that with a little pumpkin from Dollar Tree. I'm gonna add just a bit of cool temp glue, put that in at a slant, and then push that down in there. I like the look of that. Just for a little extra pizzazz, I'm gonna add some scraps of these greenery pieces that I have from Dollar Tree that I've already been using this year. That's cute. That would be so cute on a desk or as a little pick-me-up gift. You could give this to someone with a card, you know, a little get well or, or anything. Oh, this one. So many ideas. So many ideas. We shall start off with some glue and some foam. Press that in. It's just a little scrap of foam. Give it a chance to set up. Then I'm going to take some of the same eucalyptus from Dollar Tree. See how I have all the little sections spread apart? Then I'm going to add a couple of different heights in here. If you just want to add greenery to the top, you could just, you know, save your little money, put your greenery in there. Now you have a little potted plant. But you know I'm going to do more. Look at the wildflowers that I got at Dollar Tree. I've got to go buy more of these. I'm very pleased with these. Oh, the quality, they are beautiful too. Love that muted color. I'm gonna add this down in here and look how pretty that looks with that green. Really nice. And it kind of echoes the color that's in the pot, which really makes it come together in my opinion. So I'm only using one pick of these and I'm gonna cut them into little sections. And I think once you cut them all off, there are five little stems. And each stem has, you know, several little flowers at varied heights. You want to ideally put your tallest ones toward the center. But make it your own. No matter what you do, make it your own. And it will be perfect. So this is how it looks. We did all the work on that lid, so we're going to add that lid back. Don't worry. Now, I've got some trim here. You can grab some trim from Dollar Tree. I cut it in three sections. It's about a foot long. I'm going to wrap it around the florals right at the top of the jar, and I'll show you that in just a moment. And I'm going to add some hot glue just to help hold it down so it doesn't sort of float above it. This is also going to give the arrangement a little more stability. I'm cutting it at slant here. It's going to give it a little more stability because sometimes the foam, especially that type of foam, since it's not really made for dry arrangements, it will pop out. So to keep it in place, this is going to be our little helping hand. And it looks cute, I think. We're going to take another one of those picks. I'm going to measure how far down I want to put it into the arrangement, and it will fit perfectly in here. I'll cut it down. I'm going to add some hot glue or some cool glue and the foam. Then I'll put the stick down, give it a little room to breathe, off to the side, and place that lid right back on there. Look at that! Oh, I hope y'all like this one. Such a simple little thing to do. And the best thing is, you know, you might possibly still have supplies from last year that you can use. Now we're going to do a raw wood sign. All right, I'm going to use a brush. This is for my Mod Podge. I'm gonna use matte, just my choice. I have a little squeegee and a calendar that I found at Goodwill. What a beautiful calendar. Look at these pictures. Oh, that owl. This is the one we're gonna use, okay? I'm gonna carefully tear that out. This is some piece of wood that I have finished in another project. And we're gonna use it again. And believe it or not, the wood came from Goodwill. I've got two different pieces. Now, when I say Goodwill, I mean the Goodwill bins. It's not your, it doesn't have like price stickers and things that you have to go buy. There's no shelves and anything set up fancy. No, not at this one. This is the bins. You got to dig for your treasures, right? I'm going to take a little bit of this mist, it's alcohol, and then a little finger dauber and use that technique that Trish and Kay use over on their channel, Crafting Cousins. All right, so I'm going to color my edges. I tore the paper first like they do, and I am coloring my edges. 
just tapping in there and making them darker. Now, if you don't have like an alcohol spray, you can also use the uh, antiquing wax to do this, certainly. And this is gonna give it like a dark edge. I decided since it didn't look centered and I accidentally tore a little too much, that I will make this more of a round picture and put everything in the center. Got these little Dollar Tree pieces and I got those last year. I'm gonna add some of this Mod Podge onto the board and then I will spread it out mainly off to the side because this is where I want that beautiful print to be. Off on the side. And then we'll cover the whole thing so the finish is the same all over. So I'm gonna press this down in place. We're gonna do a little something extra on the side. I'm gonna add some of that Mod Podge to my edges. I did not have to squeegee this down. Uh, it laid down flat. But if you need to squeegee, squeegee. Put it down and then make sure everything is nice and flat. Okay, then we're gonna cover the entire board and let it dry. I also went into the raw edge and um, put some Mod Podge on there and it's not quite dry yet. That's why you see the white. That's just to keep it from falling apart. Some of this beautiful mesh ribbon and some green ribbon from Hobby Lobby last year on clearance. Then I'm going to use a furniture repair marker and go all the way over my sign. I love to color. I don't make time to do it like I used to because I craft, so I still get that little artistry out in my crafts. <clears throat> but I love to do this. And some people enjoy watching people paint and to color, so I'll put this in for y'all. Enjoy, and you're welcome. All right, I used maple for this. It has sort of an orangey tone to it, so I just used that color for the pumpkins. Then we're gonna cut down that mesh. Flip that over. And instead of gluing, I'm gonna use my short staples here. Excuse the blurriness when I staple. Okay, and then it's gonna be even more secure once we put down this ribbon. We're gonna layer this on top. They are two different sizes. So they make a nice look, because you can still see the back. Then we're gonna do both of these staple down. It's gonna stay in place forever. Well, maybe not forever, but you know, for a long time. These came from Dollar Tree, I think. I've had these forever. We're gonna add this and just add, a, you know, as a little embellishment underneath the Hello Fall. I think it sets it off. It gives it some dimension. And I just enjoy it like this. So I'm gonna go over it with my glue and glue it down. And the good thing is this leaf has burlap over the top, so that glue is gonna go through it and that is gonna be a nice solid adhesion. Now, yeah, I had to turn it just a tad to the side because it wasn't even while the glue was not dry yet. And this is the result of that. See up there, the Mod Podge is still a little bit wet, but it'll dry. We're having a crafting cruise, the 24th or the 29th of 2020, and I would love to meet you there. All right, now we got a wood round board. This is from Dollar Tree last year, a little leather tag. These came from Timu this year. And then I thrifted this piece. This is a little, like a little cutting board or a breadboard or whatever you want to call it. I am going to, I just got that I put my mat underneath there so you could see it against, you know, my wood table. It was kind of a blending together. I'm going to start always by cleaning and sanding. I like to give my surfaces, uh, especially these boards, a rounded edge, so I'm being sure that I, I do that. Don't want anything that could cut anybody's fingers or that could leave any type of a splinter. So once it's clean, we're going to wipe it off really well and get all that dust off. And then I will put my cling on here. This is a I believe this is a wall cling, but you can certainly use any cling that you like wherever you get it from. I love this. It looks very, again, muted, and it's just such a pretty look on this round board. Now I'm going to grab my little Cricut squeegee and go all over this to make sure there are no bubbles, wrinkles, or lifted areas. You can see here that it blends in pretty well. If you look at the lighting though, it's gonna look a little, you can kind of see your edges. I'm gonna seal this in because I want this to be permanent. When you put the Mod Podge on, you are gonna be able to see your edges even more so. 
I don't know what it is about it when you put it on there, but you can you can see the division. But you can with professional things as well. Things that you get at uh, retail stores, at craft stores, you can see theirs too. So if you like it, it doesn't bother you, leave it alone. It looks offset anyway, so I think it's pretty. But I'm going to show you how you can blend that out if you don't like it. Of course, there's the option of fussy cutting all around, but I don't have time for that, and I'm sure you don't either. So, I'm gonna grab my finger dauber and I'm going to grab a uh, my wax, and I'll go all around the edges. So where I'm going is right outside of the print and on the edges where it is on the board. Now you gotta make sure that the Mod Podge is completely dry, of course, and then I'll take my finger or a paper towel. You know, I'm messy when I craft, so I don't mind, you, <laughs> you see my hands. I don't mind that, it doesn't bother me at all. We're gonna tap that all around and just um, you know rub that in with a towel or your finger or soft cloth and then for a little extra dimension I'm going to sort of outline it by using that dauber and going all the way around the outside edge of the beautiful board and even though it says matte finish it does have a slight sheen but it's beautiful it's such a pretty piece and so simple to make y'all so I'm gonna take this little piece and y'all don't tug too tight you see how easy that I broke that the faux leather be careful when you tie your knot on the back so I'm gonna do a double knot in the back and then trim off the excess y'all know how to tie then I'm gonna add some hot glue just under it press it back down into there until it dries and then when you lift it up it'll look like this I want to embellish this because what if we wanted to give this as a gift take some scrap flowers add one up here and then I'm gonna fluff it out a bit of course want to make it look pretty not like it's been in a box for a year and then some eucalyptus from Dollar Tree just one little pick I'm gonna put that in the back I didn't even glue those down so they can be easily removed a little dot of glue behind it will keep your blessed sign in place and then I'm gonna take some strong real leather ribbon that I have and I thrifted this and I'm going to tie it in a knot. This knot is going to be bigger than the hole that is in the top of the board. So I'm going to use that as part of the design element. We'll push that right through the back and then pull that knot in place. You can see the pretty knot. You flip it over, add a little hot glue, and this is going to hold it in place. Be sure you let that dry. And then once it's dry, Make sure everything is presentable and beautiful. And this is how she'll look. So, excuse the backdrop in here. I'm trying something different. I would love for you to subscribe to this channel to see what kind of a fall backdrop we come up with. If you've enjoyed the projects today, a thumbs up will show YouTube and other people that I have created valuable content that you have enjoyed and that you have found something useful. We actually had five projects, and I am very curious to know which one that you like best, which one you think that you might do yourself. The information about the cruise is going to be in the description box below, and one thing I want you to remember is you matter. If you take nothing else away today, you matter. Somebody needs to hear that, and I truly mean it. We all do. I hope you're ready for fall and Halloween because we're going to be mixing it up all through the next few months. And we're going to be having a lot of fun. November is Subscriber Appreciation Month. Lots of giveaways coming, so be sure that you hit the notification bell after you have subscribed. I thank you so very much for dropping by, and I'll see you again real soon. Bye.